Welcome to this edition of Valor Media. This is episode number 92 for November 8th, 2021. I'm your host, Mark Appenzeller, and today I'd like to talk to you about the one voice of truth. Now, I hope this appeals to you on a couple of different levels because even though it's derived from something in Scripture, I really believe that what I'd like to share has a lot of relevant connection in a business setting. So whatever your vocation is, whatever you engage in day to day, I believe that you can take what we talk about and find meaningful ways to plug it into what you're doing. And if you do, I honestly believe that you'll see positive results. Now, in a nutshell, what I'd like to talk about today is communication. And as soon as you say that word, people shut down, which I find kind of ironic. But let's face it, it's because it sounds so incredibly obvious and overwhelmingly so. We all know how to communicate. I'm communicating right now. But it's not quite that simple. Now, truth be told, in the vast scope of human history, we have never had easier access to communication than we do right now. And to a large extent, we can thank these mobile phones that we all walk around with because not only can we place a phone call to somebody incredibly far away, but especially through the written word, we can send a text, we can post on social media, we can put a comment out there on a website, in a forum, in a chat room, instantaneously, We can communicate our ideas, our thoughts, our opinions, our attitudes to everybody in the world. And because we can do it immediately, we do it immediately. We want to say something right now, and we want people to read it and respond to it right now. Quick, quick, quick. And there's a dangerous byproduct to that. Because communication is so easy, we've made the whole process behind it easy to our own detriment, I think. Now, I'm all for technology. If I can utilize technology to do something more efficiently and effectively, if I can save myself some time, if I can have a greater influence and a further outreach, count me in. But the problem is, because of the ease of communication technology, I think, by and large, communication has gotten really sloppy. You can kind of live with that in just your own personal life, But when sloppy communication spills over into a business setting, that's where you really start to have a lot of problems. Now, maybe you never really thought about it that way before. And I think that some people automatically assume that business communication works wonderfully. I personally don't think that's the case. Now, I came from almost 30 years in the corporate world. I worked in a couple of really large companies. And from my own experience, I was kind of floored at how poor communication was. Now, communication in a business setting has two sides to it. There's internal communication, where you're directing people to do things. And there's external communication, where you're dealing with the people you're serving, your client or your customer. Maybe you're a sole proprietor, and you feel like you don't ever have to worry about internal communication because it's just you. But there could be a situation where maybe you have to subcontract with somebody, interact with an outside vendor you've never dealt with before. We need to master business communication from those two sides of the coin, the internal and the external. But I think a lot of businesses drop the ball. And again, I fault the ease of technology for a lot of that. I think the sloppiness that permeates a lot of personal communication causes us to lose intentionality in what we do in a business setting. And I talked about, from a personal perspective, being able to post on social media. If you're an older guy like me, you remember a day and age when things weren't quite so easy. And way back then, if you wanted to share your opinion about something for other people, Probably the most logical course of action was to write a letter to the editor of your local newspaper. Well, there were a lot of moving pieces there. Realistically, you were probably sitting down at a typewriter. You had to spend time collecting your thoughts. You had to type everything out. And if you made mistakes, that involved erasers and correction fluid. When you finally got it done, you had to proofread it about 27 times. If you liked how it turned out, you folded it, 
stuck it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, mailed it, waited for it to get delivered to the newspaper, hoped that somebody would open it and read it, and be moved by it enough to consider it worthy of publication with other letters to the editor. Now, that's not implying that every single letter to an editor was great. I'm sure many weren't. But people had to put a lot more thought and care into what they were doing because it was harder to do. Well, now, because things are so easy, we don't think. We have an immediate response to something, and because we can put it out there right now, that's what we do. If we do that in a business setting, I think it's a recipe for disaster because businesses are the one area where you still have to be extremely precise in what you're trying to communicate. Now, at some point in your life, you probably played the telephone game. And if you're not familiar with it, it's a party game that really, I thought, never kind of made a whole lot of sense. But basically, you get a group of people, they form a circle, and sometimes you're reading from something that's printed on a card. One person will start the process off. The idea is they are reading what is printed on a card, they whisper it into the ear of the person beside them, And it's supposed to continue. That person whispers into the ear of the person beside them, and so on and so on, until it makes its way the entire way around the circle. Then when it gets back, whoever that last person is is supposed to say out loud what the message is. Invariably, it's not the message that started when the person read it from the card. Now, to me, I think what never made sense was it's kind of cute one time, but why would you want to play that more than one time? I don't know to each his own. But it's basically the idea that people will either mishear what was whispered to them, or you might have somebody who's just trying to be a joker and they decide they'll change it around to say something funny. But it always winds up being completely different than what it started. Well, the takeaway from that is that in a business setting, if we aren't listening to the one voice of truth, it will get distorted. We have to have whatever we're doing originate from one clear source. And if we don't, then it becomes the telephone game. It starts off and it gets disseminated from this person's opinion and that person's take. And by the time it gets to where it's supposed to be going, it might be a completely different message. Now, I mentioned that this is derived from a particular scripture. So I wanted to go ahead and share that scripture with you. And then I'll talk a little bit about why I think this fits the business setting. The scripture actually is from John 16, verse 13. It says, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. Now, there's a lot to unpack in that. There's some deep heavy spiritual truth there. But if you translate that same concept over into the idea of business communication, it kind of makes sense. It's very tempting in our jobs to operate out of our own experience base. And if you have a setting where processes haven't really been defined in a way that everybody understands exactly what to do and has a resource to refer back to, then it kind of becomes a situation where everybody is a free agent. People might have minimal training. They might know enough to get through a work day. But if somebody new comes into that setting, they're not quite sure who to ask and what to make of the answers they get because it's not coming from one clear source. If we haven't properly documented what we're doing, that's especially dangerous because it allows personal opinion to come in. Somebody may be in a bad mood on a certain day and they don't present something to somebody else with the full level of detail that they need to. One of my biggest pet peeves is when you send a business email and you get a response from the recipient that pretty much tells you they only read the first two sentences. Now, if I'm communicating something important in a business email and it takes me two paragraphs, it's because there were two paragraphs worth of information I wanted to convey. If somebody only reads the first sentence, they might tell themselves, okay, I've got it. But then if they go off and try to follow what they think are the full instructions, really only having this little fragment, there's very little probability that they'll carry out what they were instructed to do. It seems like a lot of people act like they're reading a topic sentence for a paragraph 
and they tell themselves, I have everything I need from that one sentence, they probably don't. You may never have really thought of that problem of poor communication in business settings. But I wanted to share just a couple of statistics with you that'll frame the importance of this and kind of underline why it's worthy of our focus. There was a poll that was conducted by ADT. They sent a survey out asking a variety of businesses various questions, and one of the findings was pretty interesting. 83% of the people who completed that survey said that communication is the most important factor for managers to be successful. I think there's a pretty high probability that a lot of those people said that because they recognized that they weren't receiving good communication. Maybe they were told to do something, but they were never told why. And I think you always need to know the rationale of why you're being asked to do what you do. If you don't give people the rationale, if you don't provide that origin story, then what will end up happening is people will probably find easier ways to do something. And because they don't really grasp why they were asked to do it that way to begin with, they might not give the level of attention to it that it deserves, and something ends up slipping through the cracks, and maybe nobody notices. People will automatically try to be more efficient, and they may see no danger in cutting particular corners because they were never given the big picture. That's why managerial communication about processes is so crucial. Now that ties in really well with the second statistic that I'd like to share. There was a Gallup survey that was conducted, and it showed that employees are generally three times more engaged when their managers hold regular staff meetings. It's not enough to simply be able to write a good business email and tell people, this is what I want you to do, especially if you're communicating something like a procedural change. If people have done something a certain way for four years and now you're making a drastic course correction, you need to do that in a group setting. You need to give people an opportunity to provide their feedback, their opinions, their insight. Because if you don't do that, you're presuming that you've thought of everything. You have to always rely on the experience of the people who will actually be performing whatever those job functions are because they may bring up a point you never considered before. It's really crucial, and interestingly enough, there's a scripture from the book of Proverbs that fits right along with that. It's from Proverbs 15, verse 22. Without consultation, plans are frustrated, but with many counselors, they succeed. There can still be one decision maker about a particular process, but it needs to be put out there for a group discussion. Everybody needs to be able to throw their two cents in. Maybe somebody will suggest something that nobody else thought about, and it can put a completely different spin on what you were trying to do. Now, the last statistic I wanted to share with you, in some ways to me, is the most telling, but I'll forewarn you, it mentions some dollar figures that are way out of the scope of what most of us will ever deal with. The Project Management Institute compiled a report that showed that for every $1 billion that is spent on projects, $75 million was at risk due to poor communication. Now, obviously, poor communication can mean a lot of different things, but let's look at one specific example, and then I'd like to tie it back to that verse that we looked at from John. It said in that verse that the Spirit of truth will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. Now, in a business setting, you can have a situation where a manager speaks on his own authority. And that might be okay. Technically, anybody who reports to that manager is answerable to whatever direction the manager gives. So the manager can say, I would like you to carry out this. The problem can arise if the manager doesn't really understand what the job function is all about. And depending on the size of the company, realistically, the manager probably hasn't worked every single job position that they're supervising. So if they speak only on their own authority, they can technically direct people to do something, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good decision. The staff may not know how to embrace it, and they may not be able to carry it out. That's why you need more than just the manager's authority. The manager needs to be able to hear what it is that he will speak, 
And the only way he can do that is to have a template, to have some master source to go back to. Maybe that's a procedural list. Maybe it's sequential directions to accomplish a task. Maybe a flow chart that shows how a process unfolds in the department. Something like that not only provides consistency, but it provides that one voice of truth to go back to. Because otherwise, you're dealing with somebody's personal interpretation of something. And just as in the telephone game, by the time it goes full circle, it may wind up very different than what it was when it started. I'm a musician, and I've been recording for a long time. And in the pre-digital age, I used to record on tape. And one of the things that you had to deal with with magnetic audio tape is what's called a noise floor. It's basically a lot of inherent noise in the signal. Some of it comes from the microphone, some comes from the preamp, some of it is from the tape recorder itself. Now, generally, when you recorded something, the noise floor was there, but it was still a lot quieter than the actual recorded music. But if you made a copy of that tape, you were introducing even more noise. If you made a copy of the copy, it got even worse. Think about it this way. If you had a document and you made a copy of it, and then you made a copy of the copy, and then made a copy of the copy, if you do that about five times, you won't be able to read it anymore. It's the same thing if we don't have the one voice of truth. If there isn't a specific document that shows us how to do what we're doing, and somebody is simply acting on their own authority, they may not exactly know all the nuts and bolts. They may not remember every detail, and that may lead to vast inconsistency or personal interpretation that opens the door to a lot of problems. Staff have a really difficult time carrying out their job functions correctly if there isn't something that everybody can refer back to. That might seem overwhelming to you, and maybe in your business setting you don't have anything like that. Maybe you're struggling with trying to figure out how to document and define what it is that you do. If that describes the situation you find yourself in, Valor can help. Our Valor Excel division is specifically dedicated to helping businesses to unravel the complexities of what they do and to figure out proper ways to document them so that there is one voice of truth, one consistent standard that guides what everybody does. You can reach out to us at info at valorexcel.com and someone from our team will get back in touch with you to begin to discuss options to help you find ways to really work more effectively and efficiently. You can also check us out on Facebook at Valor Excel or visit our website www.valorexcel.com. I also encourage you to learn more about the overall mission of Valor Ministries by visiting our Facebook page, Valor Ministries, or our website, www.thevalorcenter.org. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions for future episodes of the Valor Media Podcast, you can contact us at media at thevalorcenter.org. The guiding concept behind Valor is moving from crisis to thriving. And recently, we've launched a new product line, everything from mugs to t-shirts, that will give you some tangible ways to remind yourself of the importance of focusing on that thriving mindset. You can check the products out by visiting our website, www.thevalorcenter.org, and clicking on the Shop button. Please like and subscribe to this podcast. And if you benefit from the content that we share on Valor Media, would you consider financially supporting us so that we can continue to bring you this kind of content? If so, you can make your tax-deductible donation securely online by visiting www.thevalorcenter.org and clicking on the Donate button. Or you can send a check or money order to Valor Ministries, 324 East Antietam Street, Suite 104, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21740. I'd like to thank you for joining me today on Valor Media. Please come back again next time. And until then, remember this, you were made to thrive. Thrive.